Uh, there's another really neat trick, okay, that you can do. Uh, this is something that they don't emphasize in lower division, but they really should. Uh, hand in hand with the topic of resonance is the topic of filtering. Okay? Uh, how is that? Well, you can drive a resonance system at many, many frequencies. Okay, that's what I was doing with the ball. I was driving the uh, resonance system over a broad range of frequencies, and it was only the frequencies that resulted in large amplitude vibrations that persisted. Okay? Well, in a way, a resonance system can serve as a filter. You can input a broad range of inputs, and what you get is at the output is the persistent waveforms, the uh, large amplitude waveforms, the waveforms that take a long time to die. Okay? So, you know, I can talk in a completely arbitrary way and filter out most of the components by sticking a tube over my mouth. Okay? What I'm picking up here, what you're hearing uh, on your end, is something like, you know, a fundamental C of the harmonics associated with it. All right, I'm not doing anything funny. I'm not talking weird. Okay, I'm talking the same way I always talk. But this resonant system serves as a filter, eating out only, or all, excuse me, all but the most persistent frequencies. Okay? Now, you might think, well, it's just a tune, man. I can do that at home, you know? If I change the two, of course, I change myself. I change the resonant frequencies. I pick different waves out of the mix, different frequencies out of the mix uh, that persist. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, of course, with the longer tube, it picks out the lower frequencies, OK? So you can literally go from filtering the low frequency components out to picking out the high frequency components. Maybe it doesn't sound so different, but I'll bet the uh, harmonics here probably overlap with some here. I don't know, what are they? C notes? C notes, wow! <laughs> <laughs> if I really wanted to be different, I would use maybe a D, something like this, and then a C here, where you could actually hear a little bit of a difference. Okay? It is kind of cool, though, that if I speak into this C, this C sounds a lot like this C sounds. Because you're actually hearing second, third, fourth harmonics in this tube that are present in the short tube. There's roughly a factor of two here, right? So those are the tubes. Those are kind of fun. Now, there's always somebody who says, hey, what if you put caps on both ends? <laughs> <laughs>
So I actually let the stick get longer, and I'm getting higher and higher notes. That's weird. Or is it? Okay. What's happening? Well, remember, I've got to have an anti-node on this end, a node wherever I pinch the uh, stick. By moving my fingers towards the top, the real key here is to realize that I'm forcing an anti-node at the top, a node at my fingers. I'm actually shortening up the resonant wavelength as I move my finger up. Okay? So you don't watch the long part, you watch the short part. If you watch the short part, you realize the wavelength is getting shorter, the frequency has to uh, get larger, it increases, okay? Now can I just grab any old point? point? Apparently. <laughs> wow, that was cool. I could grab like any old point, but that was completely random, there's no magic marking here. And it still works, but it's shaking like hell. You can actually see it shaking. Um, in theory, there are magic spots that you can kind of excite and get noise out of. Uh, that must be just a real magic spot. But you've got to make sure that when you have an anti-node here, a node where you pinch, you wind up with an anti-node on the other end as well. You have to have all your boundary conditions uh, met. You can't possibly do that. Yeah. Ah, you notice you did hear something for Second. I was able to excite it, but it didn't persist. Why? It's not resonant. I, though I gave it a large amplitude, it gapped out with that. Okay? This so happened. And it's a weird random spot there. I must be matching a boundary condition. That's weird. Totally unexpected and kind of destroys the whole damn experiment. Yeah, if I do it here. You can hear this, but that's as close as you get because it doesn't resonate. You don't get the real large amplitude vibrations. 